Okay, hello, welcome back to Randoms. It's been so long, like it's been forever. <laughs> we haven't been uploading on this channel for so long. Uh, welcome back, welcome back, you guys. Uh, I know we started off uh, quite great talking about all the spiritual stuff and you know all the church things, but they are, they are, they are. Come on, get it on and off. People don't want to accept. Sometimes when they are in cults, that they are in cults, and they come here fighting ngama pipi anga pezulu and stuff, trying to make us not want to upload anymore. But we're back, <laughs> back like we never left. Okay, consistency will be king right here. Every once or twice a week, we'll be giving you something to talk about, and we are back. All right, so yes, yeah, starting off on today's topic, let me tell you about something interesting that happened. <coughs> I don't know how many of you have noticed the video that's been making rounds on social media. Tyler is our South African uh, flower right now who's blossoming internationally, who is doing amazing things. There's a song she did. Iri, make me sweat, make me water, make me lose my breath, make me water. Onana, ololo, won herself a Grammy, Gosam, a Grammy in a category that had not been there before in the Grammys, and it was specially created for African artists. And then she beat Davido and beat Ben Boy. Yes. She beat Ben Boy and she got herself that Grammy. Although there's a lot of talks. Black China's mom is saying that she's part of that uh, secret society that we shall not mention over here. And then other people are also saying other things. You know, the number one podcaster in Africa also has a one or two, three three things to say that she you know what she's a part of that asas itina we don't know but what we know is that she came back today with that grammy in her hands okay and when she came back with that grammy uh, minister of sports arts and culture uzizi kotwa wanted a moment with that grammy and she said no <laughs> Guys, if you do not believe me, watch this. Watch this video. I'm gonna slot it here so that you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> And uh, we know that um, this album actually has been Thank you, Thank you, Tyler. That is so funny. Okay, that is funny, and that is the reason why I myself mean Nandim Tanda Utaila. Because she cannot fake it. She cannot come here and just have that minister hold that trophy for vibes. Just hold it as if he ended. Just hold it as if he, he supported the career trans transgression of this girl. No! Ufunu claim. She, he wants to claim the success of this girl to be that of uh, a beautiful country with a beautiful government that supports artists when that's not the case. So I love it. I love it for Tyler. I love it. Can this happen every other two weeks or a monthly? Where we just don't give credit, where it's not due. When we stop pre pretending. You know one thing I like about this generation, Yama 2000, they have no time to pretend. They have no time to be faking it. Till. No. 
You were not there, Mr. Minister of Sports and Arts and Culture, while I was busy struggling, harassing, and putting together my song, and putting together my album, and now you want to hold my Grammy. For what? <laughs> so yes, guys, that was about it. And a lot of people had a lot of things to say. Uh, the comment section was buzzing. And everybody's feeling just as I'm feeling. That, you know, they have no right to be claiming Tyler's success as if they contributed anything towards it. There's nothing that they contributed, okay? Tyler was helped with her team that she has over there in the USA and some of it here in South Africa. They've been helping her, not the Department of Arts, Sports, and Culture and what, what. They don't care. They never cared. <clears throat> So they're saying to Tyler here, someone commented and he's saying, rather empower young black artists and not sideline our Africans or else we will boycott her. She must go into our townships and rural areas and use this opportunity for showing the under. Ah! Okay, this person is commenting nonsense. I don't agree with them. I don't agree. For what? For which? This movement, she's been on this movement alone. Why must now the government come in and want to use her to be a big king of what, what? The kids are seeing. The kids, in fact, are the ones that have been pushing her content on TikTok. They are the ones dancing to her song while other people were not doing anything. So the people, the kids, the generation is the one that has been pushing her music on TikTok. They know her. They know about her. So there's no need for her to be going to school from school to school to school with a Grammy. For what? There are other bigger things that she needs to focus on. Like that album of hers that Americans are currently complaining about and they're saying it sounds like one song. I'm sorry, but I had to say it. Americans are complaining. And I'm sure I can find videos. Hopefully I can. Videos of some of them saying, you know what? The song is sounding like one song. But some are loving it. It's something new, something fresh. You know, they've never heard this sound before. But to others, it's like it's like one long, long, make me sweat or song, make me water. It, it doesn't finish. <laughs> the entire album. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> that's a story for another day. Um, let's move on to another story. Okay. The other story is another mess that is currently happening between Muslim Aimani and Naledi Chira. I don't usually talk about politics, but this is very interesting. The, uh, it, it's Naledi versus Musi. It's the battle of the politics. Musi Maimani is criticizing Naledi over here, and she's saying that Naledi um, is a shame that she has been placed number 200 on the EFF uh, list of candidates for parliament. This should not be happening to Naledi. Naledi is this brilliant girl or whatever, whatever. She shouldn't be in this position. And here's something that uh, he tweeted. He said, your leader does not know the price of bread, but you still believe he wants to alleviate poverty. This is how Bushiri scammed you. The EFF manifesto is an unbudgeted wish list full of lies to South Africa. Julius is afraid to debate because I will expose him. And he tweeted this and added that video of Naledi Chirwa at Bushiri's church. The Lord will bless you. He'll make you a great leader. He'll give you wisdom. Take more wisdom. Listen, pick up. God will give you more wisdom. Receive, Papa. I receive. They may fight you, mm. but they don't know how you went up with them. Yeah. Only your heart knows how you found yourself on top of the mountain. Yeah. You heard? Yeah. They may fight you. And say, look at that. Look. Oh, did you see her? She was in church. 
They don't know how you climb to the mountain. Yeah. And trust me, no one will bring you down. I honestly feel like this video of Naledi at Bushiri's church is being used. It's like she can't get over it. Every time she thinks she has moved on, it keeps haunting her. Like a bad mosquito that won't go away. Guys, it's bad. Whenever she was going through this phase in her life, she was not yet a member of parliament. She was just an ordinary girl from Mami Lodi. And she was looking for prayers because maybe things were not, you know. And now, every time, every time she has a conversation with somebody, every time she challenges somebody, but video. Papa, yes, yes, Papa. It's haunting her. So she had tweeted earlier before Musi uh, responded to this tweet. Um, she said, uh, nobody is scared to debate you. Try Herman, your political age mates, fellow failed DA experiments and captured fund beneficiaries of Oppenheimer's. Debate with Herman, the price of bread. I debate no Herman Mashaba about the price of bread. Okay. Maybe most of you are confused as what I'm talking about. This debate that Musi Maimani was asking for is coming from an interview that uh, Julius Malema had done throughout the week saying that he doesn't even know how much is a price of bread. And he doesn't know. I mean, why, why should he know when he's got people buying the bread for him? I, I don't understand why everybody wants Julius to know the price of bread. Guys, what is wrong? <laughs> what is wrong with Julius not knowing the price? I'm sure Cyril also doesn't know the price of bread. I know all these politicians who, especially the ones in parliament getting a lot of money, I'm sure most of them don't even know what the price of bread is. I mean, they, they've got somebody that they've hired and pay to go and buy the bread and come and cook it. And then when, it's come, when it comes to them, it's already prepared. I'm sure they don't even need bread. Quasi, but they eat croissants. They eat what? What? So why? Why must you know? I don't understand. It's the same thing of expecting EFF MPs in their red overalls to not have Gucci bags. Why? If they have the money and they can afford the Gucci bag, why can't they wear the Gucci bag? I mean. They, they get in the money. I mean, that's to show you. That is to show you when umuntu nyama. That stop being gullible. Stop believing everything that politicians are telling you. <laughs> Do your own research. <laughs> Do your own research. Why are you expecting him to not to know the price of bread? I don't understand. <laughs> but I know some people are going to come with me for this. They don't understand. They don't understand why he doesn't know the price of bread. But I don't get it, okay? So he said earlier on to Naledi that I can understand why you are scared to see your so-called commander to debate other leaders, okay? He doesn't know the price of bread. And uh, <clears throat> his whole manifesto is copy and paste of ZANU-PF 1997 ideas. A party based on superior logic, but scared to debate. That's funny to me. Are EFF people scared to debate? I, I think you are misunderstood, Musi, here, because what they do, all they do is debate. Oh, th they've been kicked out of parliament because they wanted to ask the president about the matras money, and he wasn't interested. So I don't understand what you mean when you say they don't want to debate. Maybe they don't want to debate with Musi, my money. But do they not want to debate? I'm not sure about that. So maybe you can enlighten us on that. So Naledi responded, I'm giver, Naledi. Nobody's scared to debate you. Try Herman, your political age mate, fellow failed DA experiments, and capture fund beneficiaries of Oppenheimer's. 
debate with the hemen, the price of bread. Malema is occupied with the price of alleviating poverty. Your bread material, he's not. Hi, Marabam Shail. You don't think so? <laughs> no, nobody thinks that. Hi, Bam Shail. Mabati. Mabati debate with Hemen at the price of bread. Um, Malima is occupied with the price of alleviating poverty. I, I bam shy bars, bars, bars. I, I bam shy, and I don't know what to say about this because when you look at it, Musi, why do you want Malima to know the price of bread? Don't we have more important issues? How about you tell us why the DA kicked you out? Bazamile to ask you on the other podcast and you didn't want to you didn't want to give a direct answer. Why did they kick you out of the DA? We still don't know. So now 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 you want Malema to know the price of bread. Like how does that change our lives? How does it change our life? How, what impact does it make in the ordinary, everyday South African? Musi, you are out of touch. Come back. Come back. You are out of touch. We don't understand why you are fighting so hard for Malema to know the price of bread. Okay, I guess it stems from deeper issues. With deeper issues. Now I might be upset after working so hard for a party that ultimately kicked me out. And Mautia Beggar, you and Julius were supposed to be somehow in the same level of, of leadership. Manjewena, you've had to start from scratch with this new political party. Hi, all the best, all the best. But yeah, and then he pulled the video <laughs> that upset <laughs> <laughs> that upsets my lady, and my lady pulled another interview or another expose story of his. The leader of the Democratic Alliance, Musi Maimane, is a man under pressure. He's been accused of refusing to return a card donated to the DA by Steinov and living a lavish life in a rented house in Cape Town. Musi <sighs> That's what my lady came back with. Now, lady came back with this footage that I did not even know this news that he was refusing with a car that was from Steinhoff. Aren't the Steinhoff people the ones where the uh, Marcus Eusta situation? So he was driving a car that belongs to that guy who is alleged to have deleted himself. We are going to say alleged because we are not sure right now the media says they've confirmed but the confirmation is not sufficient for me i need more but steinhoff he had a car from those people and naledi is here saying yes you are now on the right track mfundisi Pastors and scams. These are the people you must debate, not Malema. You can start with the scams. You've both done as pastors. You can speak on the Steinhoff car. You refused to return when you were dumped by your white captains. There was a time that Musima Imani was a pastor. I don't know if he's still a pastor, but he did disclose that he was a pastor at some point. And then pastoring and politics and and now I'm hearing of Stenhoff cars. I don't know what to believe anymore. But either way, that was it. That was what was happening between these two the whole day. They've been going at it. Okay. There's so many tweets that are responding to one another. I just took the ones that are a highlight to me. And yes, it's going down. And apparently all of this started because Naledi was named number 200 on the list of the EFF candidates that are going to go and have seats at parliament. And people are baffled, or were rather baffled, as to how that happens when Carl Mihanias and other people just joined like a couple of months ago. Even Ringo Malingos got seat number 40-something. And Naledi is over there at the bottom in 200. Oh, my goodness. 
And the worst thing is that she keeps speaking with so much loyalty and respect for the CIC like nothing is happening. <laughs> the feminists have even turned on her because initially she had missed a parliamentary meeting <coughs> about two weeks ago. She was supposed to be in parliament and represent the EFF for some parliament meeting and she didn't show up and then she came back and said she had other emergencies to attend to she is a mother okay one of her children allegedly was sick and so she said you know what i had to attend to those pressing matters and she came back and she apologized but it seems like that apology, apology was not well received in the eff because like a week later, now her name is number 200 on the list. Can't you una lady wa menta nu Julius? Guys, ngati mina that bus missed me. Because even now, when I think about it, that whole pa 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 in this video, it comes from Julius, doesn't it? <laughs> there was a time Julius made a speech and was throwing shade at Naledi and was talking about papa, 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 and the people at the Twitter did what they did and they found this footage. And this video has been haunting Naledi ever since. So, girl, I don't know what you did to that man. I, I don't understand. But, yeah, it, it's serious. It's very serious. I don't know what to call it. But it's a mess. I don't know whether you will ever be forgiven. I don't know. But number 200... It cuts deep. After all the work that you've been putting in, you are out there in the streets campaigning for the EFF. You've been wearing red. <laughs> I don't know what they did to you. I don't get it. But we'll see what time. So guys, this is the first video that I've done. And hopefully you guys enjoy it. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below what you think. And... Uh, don't be too hard on me. And maybe, just maybe, I'll be back with the second one and a second update. So these are the two stories that I wanted to tell you about that I found interesting today. So until the next one, from Random's team, it's a bye.